Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Sorry for the interruption, but it is super important. If you desire to have a podcast, don't be afraid. Use Spotify for podcasters. It's what I use. Go to anchor.fm. It's free. And get your voice out there. The world needs to hear your wisdom, your experiences, your love. So don't be afraid. Go share your love. All righty, everyone. I'm in my car. I'm officially sick. My husband and I just went and gave blood. I cannot wait to get those results back to see how my keto eating is doing with my cholesterol and to see how my husband is doing. So I'm waiting in a parking lot to go grocery shop, but I figured I must come to you before all of that because I think it's important for us to remember that Jesus sent them out two by two, two by two. So who is your accountability partner? A best friend, a spiritual director, a faith coach? It could be this membership group, but it's always better to have someone that you can directly talk to, that you can communicate one-on-one with at any moment. My accountability partner is my husband. I've been sharing everything with him on this journey since day one. The minute he walked in the door after I went to confession after 26 years, I about tackled him and told him he has to go. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. And then as I started going down this path and learning things about Catholicism, I would bring them to him all the time. Like, did you know this? Did you know that? What about the Eucharist? Did you know that that was Jesus? Look at that. You used to, bleh. look at this used, Eucharistic miracle. Wow. Tongue is not working this morning. And I was showing him all this stuff. And then as I was going down my journey, I'm like, okay, I need to work on virtue. I started telling him I needed to work on patience. He started laughing. And there are times when he looks at me and he says, wow, honey, you are really changing. And there are other times where he says to me, honey, you shouldn't say things. (laughs) So I say a lot of things and a lot of them I don't follow through on. And he knows me and he knows when he hears something a little goofy that I'm probably not going to follow through on it. But otherwise, it's been pretty good stuff. Things that I want to work on, like I want to start working out. I want to get healthy. I want to get rid of these pains and aches. And he takes those seriously, but he also knows how lazy I am and how many times I've said that I wanted to do it, but never followed through and kept it on a regular basis. But now that's a different story and he can see it. And he's working out and he's eating better as a result. And so this is why we should have an accountability partner, especially one that is close to us. And he or she does not need to be on your journey. My husband isn't going to mass. My husband is on a journey. I mean, he's the one that's reminding me sometimes, hey, we didn't say grace. He is on a journey, but he's not where I'm at. And it doesn't matter because I'm just telling him about mine and what I'm trying to do to make my life more happy, more healthy, more holy. Sorry, I'm wearing a little windbreaker coat, so you might be hearing my arms move because I cannot just sit without moving something (laughs) and talking. 
So again, we need accountability partners. We need someone on the journey and they don't have to be like you where you are on your journey. We just need to know that somebody else knows that we're trying to work on something because if we don't, excuse me, if we don't share with people what we're doing, then we can easily break our own word to ourselves because nobody else knows. And we're okay with lying to ourselves sometimes, right? No, we don't, we're not going to do it today. And that is what we don't want. And so there are even people in the membership group who did not put down what they were going to work on out in the public sphere with the group. And I sit and I get kind of bummed because I'm thinking, you know, where's the accountability then? If we haven't put that out there, then nobody knows what we're working on and nobody can pray and help us and nobody can actually share some of their own experiences going through that. That's the point of a support group. And I don't care if it's my support group. I don't care if it's a one person support group. It wouldn't be a group. It'd be a support person, your accountability partner. But we need that. So if you don't have that, pray about someone that you can be. Pray about someone. Have God put them in your heart that you can be honest with and you can be vulnerable with and who you know won't judge you. And it may not be the closest one to you. It may be someone who you don't know that well. Maybe it is a spiritual companion at your parish. But if we don't share what we're doing with someone else, it's super easy for us to just stop it and not continue down that road and to give up. Or when we fall, we don't have anyone to talk to to help pick us up. And when we succeed in an awesome way and a triumph, we don't have anyone to share in that joy. And that is not fun. That's not enjoying the journey. The journey is, again, not meant to be walked alone. This is why I have my ministry, because my whole journey, I was by myself. Up until I started my ministry, and that was when I opened up doors and I started meeting a whole group of people that I had not ever spoken to in my life, these churchgoers, and so many new friends, so many new experiences, so much new friendship. And I would share with people that I barely knew some of the things that I wouldn't even share with my best friend who's not on the journey. So that accountability partner may be someone who would shock you. Like, hmm, maybe it is Susie. I don't know. I don't really know Susie that well, but I feel very comfortable with Susie. And Susie never judges me. I can pretty much tell Susie anything. Maybe I should just reach out and see if she'd be game. And or someone in your home. You do need support in your home if you're the only one doing something. Because sometimes they can not only be your support, but they can also be your downfall. They can sabotage you, whether they know it or not. They may be trying to coax you into something that you gave up. Let's say it's a big bowl of ice cream or something and you're trying to go keto. And he or she is not keto. And they say to you, come on, a little bowl of ice cream won't kill you. But in the end, it will. And we know that because the more that we realize sugar and our insulin spikes does wicked damage to our body, we don't look at that ice cream anymore like it's something we're missing out on. We're looking at that like, oh my gosh, that is pure poison, pure poison. And when we eat it after we've been on ketosis for a while, our bodies absolutely completely bloat and start to ache again. Maybe even you'll get some runs and diarrhea or constipation, but your body will completely puff up. I'm telling you, and you're going to gain a ton of weight. Look at, I gained eight, I'm sorry, in eight days, I gained 10 pounds and I did not eat sweets like going out of style. I just had these couple of pieces of this pie and this cake at night. Now I wasn't even going that crazy. I wasn't. I was drinking 
a little bit more, but nothing to put on 10 pounds. I mean, geez, I'd have to drink a keg of beer every day. But the point is, when we find that accountability partner, we have to be prayerful about it, but also tell the people in your family, because it will hold you accountable. If you're telling them that you're giving up sweets, you're probably not just going to get up in the middle of dinner, walk to the freezer and pull out that ice cream and pour, you know, make yourself a bowl. There are, there, oh, my voice and my tongue and everything is just, la, 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 la. they will all look at you and be like, what are you doing? You just told us yesterday <laughs> that you're not doing that. Now, you can also make a deal with them and ask them not to be like that with you. But maybe just say something, you know, like, don't make me feel guilty. Just point it out. You told me you wanted me to tell you, do you really want that? Like, that's the thing. You can also put little notes in your refrigerator. Like, are you hungry or are you bored? That's half of the battle is determining real hunger cues. And we don't even know what real hunger cues are because we eat all the time. All right, just going to let you know, I did not, speaking of accountability, I did not do my second meditation yesterday. I just wasn't feeling well, and that's a big excuse. So I went to bed. I took a nap. I had time to do it before I got in the shower, but I didn't. I just didn't feel like it. So boom, I'm calling myself out. Today, I haven't prayed because of my tests. So I'm going to do that when I get back home after the grocery shopping and the rosary. And I did, however, yesterday do a leg workout, which I did not really want to, but I thought, okay, I'm going to do that. Why did I do that? Because when you fast, I'm still in my fast. I have not broken my fast, but when you fast, try not to lay around. The whole point is to stress your metabolism. So go for a walk or do some sort of little workout. My leg workout was a 30 minute workout. It was just me basically, excuse me again for my sniffling, on the, flo- on the floor doing leg lifts and all these kind of things with weights and bands and all that kind of stuff. But I needed to do something. And I wanted to, again, shake the metabolism because I could have just easily laid around all day long and done nothing. But I didn't do what I wanted to do with God. So I have all that on my plate today. But I'm telling my husband every single day what God wants me to work on. That's my last thing. So we have, you know, three big things for 21 days, whether you're in the membership group or not. Let's all do it. Find something soul, mind, and body that you want to work on. But every day in prayer, God should be telling you something. We should be hearing something that we should be doing. And that should also be something that we share with our accountability partner. So find one, pray for one, and I am sure it is going to be so much more help. In the beginning, in the middle, in the far end of your journey, we all need people on it. And those people change sometimes. And if you don't have something that comes, someone that comes into your mind, then ask the Lord to give you someone, to put someone in your way. And I'm happy to be that person, by the way. I'm happy to do it in the membership club. I mean, you that you can make that a public thing. Your membership group can be that. But on a daily basis, I'm not there. I'm not, you know, close to you in a physical perspective, but I am remotely. I'm trying to be that. And I want everyone else in the membership group to be that too. And I'm kind of bummed that not everyone in the membership group has shared what they're working on because that's part of the accountability is putting what you are working on out there so that other people see it for two reasons. Number one, so that they can pray for you and support you. But number two, maybe they've already accomplished that feat that you are trying to conquer and they can give you great advice, not getting in your kitchen, telling you how to do it, but telling you how they did it. That's all I do. I'm telling you all how God has worked with me in these certain areas and how he can help you too. All right, now we're getting long. Find an accountability partner. God sent them out two by two. We need people on the journey. 
Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, we ask that you put in our path someone who we can be vulnerable, vulnerable with, honest with, who we love and we know loves us and only wants the best for us. As we go down this path of change, and accountability is so important, we want to be able to make our word matter to ourselves and to you, but we know that help on this earth with other humans that you've put in our lives is one way for us to continue down that path of righteousness and holiness. So we ask you, Father, please put in our life and put it clearly in our minds and in our hearts, that accountability partner we need for this journey so that we can become holier, happier, and healthier, and perhaps them too as they witness us on this journey. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, everyone, I'm getting into the grocery store. I, I'm, I, you know, I got to be honest, I'm feeling good this fast. I am definitely all about trying to get in autophagy. I mean, you always got to look at your goal of fasting. What is it? Mine is about cleaning up my cellular environment, the garbage, the gunk, not about losing weight, but I do want to see how my body is reacting. Remember last time the fast I had mentioned I had gained two pounds. So I'm really paying attention to what my body is feeling like, what I'm ingesting. So I haven't had any vitamins. I haven't taken a, a medicine at all for this cold or my chest or anything, except for the fact that I've gargled with hydrogen peroxide and shot some up my nose, which I'm sure everyone's like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I have this little nasal squeeze thing, you know, that you're supposed to put sodium, you know, like salt solution up your nose. And it kind of is like a neti pot. But this time I put probably too much, uh, <laughs> too much hyd hydro hydrogen peroxide. Sorry, that word got weird in my mind. Um, in there and I shot it up my nose. My eyes were burning like crazy. I just want to get this gone, but I don't want to use any other meds. I probably killed my mouth microbiome and other good bacteria by doing that. But I'm telling you, I don't have a sore throat and that is killer. Once I get a sore throat, I gargle and it's gone. I hate sore throats. I'd rather have a cold. Okay, get on out there. Find that accountability partner because you know it and I know it. It makes a difference. And if you don't have one that's person to person or someone that, you know, is close to you, get in the membership group and have that be your accountability and put in your comments and help others on the journey. And that's the family that we're building over there or find it somewhere, 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 because we need it. All righty, go find something more with God today. Soul, mind, and body. Have a blessed and inspired day.